Good evening, Tiffin, Ohio. This is The Late Night Show, and I'm your co-host, Henry Bourne. Now I'd like to introduce to you your host. From the center of Ohio to the center of our hearts, Mr. Scott Carpenter. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Late Night. I am Scott Carpenter, my co-host, Henry Bourne, alongside. We got a great show for you tonight. And uh, Hank, you know what? I love to start with conflict. I do enjoy it. I actually prefer conflict. Conflict is a great thing. Yeah, it wins stuff for you. So it you wins stuff when you're, you know, the U.S. of A. Exactly. Yeah. And actually, I never win. So yeah, it's very true. I, don't, I prefer conflict, but I yeah. suck at it. It's, but yeah, competition, conflict, not your thing. No. But <laughs> Kim Jong-un's back in the news today. Right, exactly, I know. But he threatened once again to launch nuclear missiles at the United States. Well, we've heard it once or twice, but U.S. intelligence tells us not to fear because he can't reach the button and there's no stepladder in sight for him. Wow, that's, that's kind of funny. That's the most secure U.S. intelligence yeah. I've ever seen. Thank you. It is kind of yeah, funny. That's you know, the whole point yeah, is that you, we're trying to be funny. You know what else I heard? What else? Uh, we don't have to worry about their Navy because I heard they lost a paddle and they had to turn back. Oh, very true. That's all they got is a few yeah. paddles and a yeah, few guys. A few paddles, and yeah. yeah. Just boom. It's just the nuclear boom. missile threat. Boom. Yeah. 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 No, their nuclear missiles are just fireworks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Sorry. But uh, Donald Trump, we're talking about now serious candidate for presidency in Donald Trump. He's got the highest delegate count. And then the last debate, he actually talked about the size of his penis. Yes, somebody brought up that he has small hands. Apparently, that's a very sensitive issue for Mr. Trump. But they brought up the fact that he has small hands. And another candidate said, well, small hands, you know what that means. Small gloves. Small gloves. Small right. gloves. But you know what they're insinuating. But anyway, Donald Trump defended it and said that he has a very large man parts in hell. I thought he was going to come out and say, it's the new Trump Tower. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't put it past Donald Trump to say something. It'd be like, that. like him. But you know what? He is a serious candidate for president, ladies and gentlemen. And this graphic right here describes it perfectly how people are going to think in the next three years. 2016, there's no way Donald Trump can be president. 2017, there's no way President Trump can do that, can he? 2018, watching the Hunger Games tonight, I hope my district wins. You know what I say to that? I volunteer! There you go. Volunteer tribute. And in the new world of Donald Trump, you might possibly need that. Well, I think I'd win. Yeah, maybe, but we just talked about how conflict's yeah, really true. Conflict's not, not my thing. Not your thing. <laughs> but tired of talking about Donald Trump yet? I am a little tired of so it. So is half of America. Just like everyone's tired of his comb over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But Donald Trump is rivaled, they say, by John Kasich. Yeah, John Kasich's campaign is saying that he is the only campaign that could beat Hillary Clinton in a general election. However, Campaigners and everybody alike is a little worried about John Kasich still playing Fruit Ninja during the debate. The President of the United States again has to bring people together, have a position. They need to be able to penetrate these people when they are involved in these plots and these plans. And we have to give the local authorities the ability to penetrate the disrupt. That's what we need to do. Encryption is a major problem, and Congress has got to deal with it. So obviously, John Kasich has a little bit of a problem enunciating with what he's saying, and the hand motions don't really go, Hank. You know, Scott, do you think it could be a ploy just to distract his opponents? Possibly. You never, and we're really not cutting through, are we? It's no, I don't think it's actually in the budget, to no, be honest with you. it's not in the budget. By the way, you're going the casual look today, huh? Well, um, it's not in the budget, to be honest with no, you. No, no, I don't think so. That's why I had to wear the jeans as well. It's not but in hey, the budget. You still look good. You know what you look like, don't you? Tell me. A man dime. Ooh, yeah. You know what I am? A man nickel. Better. Yep. Man penny. Ooh, oh, yeah. got him, got him. Yep, got him. But, uh, no, I mean, John Kasich, serious chance of possibly beating. You never know. You never know. But Leonardo DiCaprio, going off of politics here, Leonardo DiCaprio ended up winning an Oscar, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Leo won his first Oscar after eight, that was his eighth try, wasn't it, Hank? I believe it was his eighth yes, try. Yes, his eighth try. Yes. Seven other times he's been nominated, he doesn't win. He doesn't get one when he's wearing filthy rich suits and he's rocking the look of a stockbroker and snorting cocaine. But he gets one when he's really a suffering person for about two and a half hours. Makes me think that the Oscar committee just had to feel bad for the guy and said, we need to give him an Oscar before yeah. he kills himself. I think that's the only logical thinking behind that. No, yeah, absolutely. You know what, Hank? That was a really good monologue. But on Yes, and we got more jokes coming your way on the other side of this short commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Late Night Show. I'm your host, Scott Carpenter, alongside my co-host, Henry Bourne. And I was just informed by my producers that I did the entire monologue with my zippers down. 
sleep right now, which will really arouse my co-host, Mr. Henry Bourne. But anyway, I'm easily aroused. Yes. We are about to play the game Playground Insults. How this works is that me and Hank will insult each other like we're children, and neither one of us can laugh. Hank, to serve. You know, Scott, when I see your tan, it reminds me of my favorite color, orange. <laughs> when, I, when I see your bald spot, it makes me think that you saw rainbows in black and white. You know, when I try to insult you, excuse me, when you try to insult me, I find it hard to hear you from that low to the ground. When you run and you, you look so unathletic and your head wobbles back and forth, it makes me think you're Sid running from an ice age. From an ice age? Yes. That's impossible. <laughs> anyway. Just go with it. You're like the middle bun of a Big Mac. I don't know why you're there, but I deal with it anyway. Yeah, well, your, your chest hair looks like patches of dead squirrels. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, your profile really wants, makes me want to ski down it. Yeah, well, when you run, I picture it in slow motion, just like Baywatch but it really doesn't remind me of David Hasselhoff. It reminds me of Pamela Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is Playground Insults. Hank, you know, I, uh, you know, I didn't really mean any of those things, but I'm terribly sorry. You know, I think your profile looks great. <laughs> yeah, you know, I could ski down it, right? That I could, just the whole wave thing I did you with my hair. You do have a great wave going right now. It is a great wave. It, it makes me want, it's voluptuous. Ooh. Good vocab. I know, Good right? Good vocab. Thank you. But uh, yeah, that's Playground Insults. And ladies and gentlemen, when we get back, we have guest Alyssa Eckley on the show. That's coming up next. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Late Night Show. I am your host, Scott Carpenter. And our first guest on the show tonight is Alyssa Eckley. Alyssa, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. Good. And uh, so, you know, you are a writer for the Odyssey, correct? I'm actually the editor-in-chief for the Odyssey here at Heidelberg, so that's kind of cool. Well, it takes in a lot of work. And what, is, what does the Odyssey do exactly? The Odyssey was actually started out of a university in Illinois, and it's basically just a media source composed of like, articles written by college students, and it's from like 500 universities throughout the country. Wow. Um, actually, your co-host, Henry Bourne, is a writer for our, our team. Really? That's me! <laughs> right here! <laughs> that's Hank. Writer for the Odyssey. You can check out his article. Hank actually just published his first article, right? Right. It should be up tomorrow, actually. Um, something about lobsters. Something about lobsters. That sounds pretty interesting. It almost sounds like Hank's right about STDs. <laughs> you know, it started off this, as the Titanic and then mm. ended up as a salad. You know, I'm not really sure, but it's pretty good. I liked it. See, I thought it was just a new STD, like it's the development from crabs, is it's the lobsters. It's possibly. like the more ginormous form of crabs. Yeah, yeah that's pretty absolutely. And it just pinches and locks on. Maybe I don't <laughs> even know. But, uh, you know, so you write for the Odyssey and everything like that, but we're also pretty good friends on campus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. And just this past weekend, you went down to Columbus, and who did you meet? You know, this weekend, I met Ezekiel Elliott. And what was that like? Not being an Ohio State fan, it was, you know, not as great as it was for some of the other people, but it was still kind of cool just because it's Ezekiel Elliott. Right. And, you know, he wasn't necessarily in the right state of mind when I met him, I but imagine. I touched his arm. There so you that go. was kind of cool, you know, this hand touched Ezekiel Elliott's arm. There you go. And as a Michigan fan, you probably took a shower and rubbed that off real quick, tried absolutely. to get it off of you. Yeah, absolutely. But what was he, so what was he, you went to uh, a bar downtown in Columbus. We were both there. What was he, what was he like when, when you saw him? Was he doing anything? Maybe NFL <laughs> people. And I think our, our co-host, Henry Bourne, was there as well, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually think Hank tried to get a couple pictures with him, and he just wasn't about it. But when I saw him... He was definitely surrounded by a parade of women, buying them all drinks. I actually think his uh, bar tab for that moment in time was $75 for like four drinks. And I was like, oh. Just the moment in time that you just, saw him. Just the moment in time that I saw him. So I was like, oh, you know, I wonder how much money you've spent here tonight. But F Funny how quickly the money piles up when you're young oh, yeah. and athletic like that. Exactly. It's probably not the smartest way to, to spend it, which may be the reason I didn't let Hank take those pictures. Probably not. Considering that he's supposed to be drafted. 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Late Night Show. I am Scott Carpenter, and me and Alyssa are going to play the Whisper Challenge. Now, as you see, Alyssa has headphones on. She cannot hear anything that I'm saying. It is blaring music in her ears. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to give phrases back and forth to each other. The phrases will pop up right below you on the bottom of the screen here. So here we go. She's going to try to guess what I'm saying, and it's going to start. You ready? Ready? All right. Shoebox Moon Pie. Go <laughs> ahead. Shoebox Moon Pie. Shoebox? Yep. Say the second one. Shoebox Moon Pie. Shoebox Boom Box? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're close. Okay. First word's right. We'll give this one more try. Shoebox Moon Pie. Shoebox. <laughs> All right, go ahead, go ahead. It was it was shoebox moon pie. Oh yeah, I shoebox never moon have pie. That. Not quite sure what that is, but <laughs> All right. not either. Here we go. Oh, this is loud. It's very Here loud. Wow. <laughs> All right, you good? Hank's swollen cheeks. I was I wasn't paying any attention. You're gonna have to give that to him again. <laughs> Hank's swollen cheeks. Whose titties are out? <laughs> Is titties in it? No. <laughs> All right. Hank's swollen cheeks. I'm still stuck on titties. <laughs> I can't get past that. All right, one more time. One more time. Okay. One more time. Hank's swollen cheeks. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got nothing. What was it? Hank's the swollen cheeks. Oh, yes. We were actually just talking about that off the set. Oh, yeah. Goodness. How did I not get that? How Real get, tears. How did I get what I got out of Hank's swollen cheeks? You know, I'm not sure. Not sure. Your turn. You that is way mind. more difficult than it's we It's so hard. Really got to enunciate. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Alyssa's second word. Oh, God. Petrified curly fries. Did you just say petrified curly fries? She got it. She got it. That's what it was. That's what it was. Voila. If anybody's seen the movie How to Be Single, they'll get that one especially. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's see if I can do as good. Oh, real tears. Okay. This next one's hard. So, all right. Donald Trump's hair. Tattoos are dope? No. <laughs> Donald Trump's hair. You smoke dope? <laughs> no. <laughs> Donald Trump's hair. This song is really distracting. Very distracting. Yeah, it's very good. But I have no idea what you're saying. No idea. Not a clue. All right, I'm going to try one more time. One more time. One, one more time. time. Are ready? Donald Trump's hair. Sound of Donald Trump's air. So close. <laughs> Was that close? It's Donald Trump's hair. Oh, it was so close. close. That was so, so close. So close. An H and an A really has no difference, but no, not at all. All right, here we go. All right, the third oh one. Oh my goodness. Oh god. Oh god. Here we go. Crankshaft air vent. Crankshaft air vent. She got it. <laughs> she got it. No way. <laughs> No way on the first try. Oh my goodness. All right, so All I right. just have one close. Okay, here we go. All right. Are you ready? Pickle juice, hair cream. One more time. Pickle juice, hair cream. Photo shoot at the fair. All right, ready? Pickle juice, hair cream. We're at the fair all the time. <laughs> Pickle juice, hair cream. Boston cream pie. <laughs> I've got either I'm really bad at this or you're terrible at enunciation. <laughs> These words are really hard to enunciate. Pickle juice, because that just kind of runs together. Oh, very Hair true. cream. Oh, that's a terrible combo. It's a horrible that's a combination. Com all right, last word. Last all right, word. This one counts for 27 points. Oh, all right. Counts for it all. <laughs> all right. Redneck hairpiece. 
redneck hairpiece. Oh my gosh! I am. This, I'm in the right field. I am a hell of an enunciator. <laughs> I'm in the right field. All right, last, all right, last all right. one. Here we go. Here we go. Cotton swab playground. What time is it? <laughs> Cotton swab playground. One more time. Cotton swab playground. Donald Trump man dime. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Cotton swab playground. Cotton swab. How am I? That, that must sound like Donald Trump man dime. It kind of, you know, I could see it. You could. I could you see could. it. Anyway, Alyssa, thank you for stopping that by. Great. That was a ton of fun, right? You think you went to give me the turtle. I answer. did, yes, and you, the yep, there you go. There's the turtle. <laughs> All right, well, on the other side of this commercial break, we're going to have Taylor Kwai coming in to visit. That's next. Don't go anywhere. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Late Night with Scott Carpenter, and I've got my second guest of the night here, Taylor Kwai. Taylor, how are you doing? Well, it's Kwai, Scott. It's Quay. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Quay Why is it Quay? Uh, thank you for asking. But it's actually a Q U, not a K W. Oh well, well I'm just gonna call you Kawhi because I like it. So Kawhi, are you here, Taylor? Well, you know we were all eating dinner together, our family group, and uh, you said I wasn't interesting enough, so I uh, took off my T-shirt, put on a nice shirt, and ran up here. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's exactly what I told you. But uh, so uh, what? Are you, well, Kawhi, are you here besides that? Well. I am here to talk about Greek Week. Okay, and when is that coming up? Uh, March 28th. Coming up. So uh, the theme for it is what? Let the games begin? Yes. So talk about prior year Greek Weeks. What, what all goes on at Greek Week? What can people look to? Are prospective students there to watch and stuff like that? Yeah, anybody can go. It's like free reign. Um, basically, it's just all the Greek groups come together and we like compete in different and fun activities. Like last year, I guess, it was my first one. and. We did a talent show, and I'm in Delta Sigma Chi, and we like did dances to Uptown Funk. Um, my roommates, uh, Kappa Psi Omega, and they did Pitch Perfects, like you know, riff off, and it was just really fun. And I do hear that your roommate ended up winning. Was it Rap Song of the Year? She best was our rap. first guest, Alyssa. Yeah. She ended up winning Best Rap. Yeah. And what she went for? Best Rap. But but I mean, <laughs> 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 clearly, clearly. But I, when I go over, I don't see the trophy or anything like that. What song was played and what, what did she do? Oh, uh, No Diggity. Ooh, that's a classic. Yeah. That's a classic. Um, so Greek Olympic, and there's also going to be a talent show involved with that, right? Yes. So yes. Uh, talent show, what was, that, what was that peak performance for you last year? Oh. Um, and were you in the talent show? I was in the talent show. You were? Yeah. I got What would you do? Well, we all did. It was a group effort. Um, we did a dance to Uptown Funk. Oh, yeah. Could have been better, but you know do our best. Should have, would have, yeah. yeah. It's the effort that counts. It it's is. Where it, it A really, for effort. When it comes to the Greek life, when I notice on campus, is it's all about the heart. Yeah. It's not really about winning as much as it is about heart. And I find that really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But what is, like last year, what was the peak of the talent show for you? Oh. Well, you know. Can I, can I ask <laughs> if it, was it the wrestlers that did the It's Raining Men at the Heidelberg talent show? Was that that one that they did that? No, no. no um, actually, I think my favorite part is when uh, the hides were actually up and they did a skit from, what is it, The Office? And they were just like pretending to like juggle and they were just like, <coughs> and then they did it again and they went down the audience and they were just like shooting guns at each other's faces and whatnot. And it was just really funny because you didn't see it coming. Right. And, and I was like crying real tears. And all these fraternity sororities, they prep these things before they go on yeah. and stuff like that. Got to be a pretty big bonding thing happening. It really there. is, yeah. Um, I like it because y you make so many new friends and you don't, like, you never know them before you get here. Right, and then it's probably all. And then, from what I know, we're a fairly small school here at Heidelberg. Mm -hmm. That Greek life stuff and everybody coming together probably just feels like one big family instead of separated families. It really does, yeah. Um, like, Greek unity is a really big thing, and I actually get along really well with mostly every Greek group on campus. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, Taylor, this is your chance to look at the camera and tell everybody why. Over there at camera three, tell everybody yeah. why they should come to Greek Olympics. Oh, um, look you deeply into their <laughs> eyes. <laughs> you get <laughs> <laughs> you get to um, watch everybody make fools of themselves, um, have fun. And uh, last year, one of my uh, one of my sorority sisters actually broke her leg 
during tug of war, so you get to see some pretty eventful stuff. <laughs> so uh, come out and watch it. It's a great time. Don't know if that last part was going to promote <laughs> anybody to come see it, but I like where your head's at. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Taylor Kawhi. Taylor, thank you so much for coming on the show. That's the turtle as well. And when we come back, we'll wrap things up, me and Hank, on the other side of this short commercial break. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Late Night Show. I am Scott Carpenter, alongside my co-host, Henry Bourne, here. And uh, Hank, we usually use this time to kind of just be goofy and wrap up the show, but I think I want to get serious for a second. You know, Scott, we do use this, excuse me, we do use this time to be funny and have lighthearted jokes, and it is your show, so I understand where you're going with this kind of, what you're doing. Thanks, Hank. You're a valuable asset to this team. I know I'm great looking and valuable, but you are the key to the, all the success of this show. Oh, Hank. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I do want to take this time to be serious and just kind of put a light on something. Just last week, my dog Shortstop passed away. And my dog is my best friend. He was my family's best friend. And they really do become a member of the family. And I was surprised at how much this tore me down. And there's not one person that said it's just a pet because I think a lot of people understand that they are a valued member of the family. And they cause so much happiness. And they're right there when they need you. And I heard a couple stories about other people's dogs passed away. And one was uh, my neighbor who came over to comfort us. And he said that his, uh, his wife's dad was a general in the Army. And he was a very serious guy. And he didn't take much emotion to anything. However, when his dogs passed away, it destroyed him. And the reason I understand that is for the same reason I felt when my dog passed away. That is truly your companion through anything. And it was just meant, he shortstop meant so much to me. And we buried him the following day on a hillside of uh, Zanesville. I gave him the proper burial and I could give him one last scratch behind the ear. As we put him down, I thought to myself, and you hear the question all the time, how can the world be a better place? How can we have this much violence? And I think the answer is pretty simple to anybody who's ever owned a dog. And that is, you be loyal, you be loving, you be excited, and there for the person when they need it the most. That's what my dog Shortstop did, and that's why I will be forever thankful for Shortstop, my best friend. So this show goes out to you in loving memory of shortstop. Good night, ladies and gentlemen.